Hi, I'm George, and we'll be using a Photoshop Elements copy and paste technique to merge this foreground picture here into that background picture. Okay, first thing we need to do, let's just get that out of the way, and I'll dock this right here. To make this easy, I have floating windows set up. Go up to Edit, come down to Preferences and General. And make sure that this checkbox right here, Allow Floating Documents in Export Mode, is checked. Okay. Now the first thing we need to do is to remove the background from this person, make a selection around just the person. And to make that as easy as possible, I'm going to first make a duplicate of the background here. There we go. Let's hide the original. This is just in case. This is a safety. Now go up here to this background, and I want to increase the separation here. It's a little bit close along the edges of the arms out here. So let's increase that separation, and we can do that by increasing the contrast in here. So let's go up to Enhance come down to lighting and levels. Now in here you can increase the contrast by pulling in the slider controls in here. You may see darks darker as you can see that. This control here, you can make the whole image lighter or darker. What we want is just to have a darker image and more contrast. Don't worry about it looking kind of cartoonish, that's fine. We just want to have a nice separation in here on those edges. And that looks pretty good. Just choose OK. Now I did that on this layer because if I used an adjustment layer, this next trick wouldn't work. So it has to be on the actual layer. That's also why we're making a duplicate here and doing this on a duplicate layer. Okay, now we need to make a selection right around this figure. And for that, I'm going to zoom in, make it just easier to do like that. And you can use any selection tool you want. An easy one here is just the polygonal lasso tool and make a nice little selection fairly close in, but not touching your subject. Doesn't need to be exact or anything, just in kind of close like that and work your way around. And wherever it comes in, a little tight area like this, try to work it in so you have some space. Now, if you hold the space bar down, you can move the whole image. There we go. Now let's work this right around like that and then back out. Make sure you don't cross over your selection and then just take your time and work around the image. Now I'll go ahead and finish this part of the selection, and then I'll bring the recording right back up again as soon as I've done this. We're now going to clean up our selection, make it a better selection by using the Refine Edge tool. It's right down here. Click on that. Brings up the Refine Edge dialog box. Now I have mine set here for overlays, my personal favorite of these. You can go up and use these different ones depending upon your background. I'll sometimes come down here and do on white or on black to see how it, the edge is working. Once I have the basic refine edge in place, you can use that for cleaning things up. Let's do a smart radius, set this at one pixel. Now this whole technique in here will work whether or not using with a white background. White background is easier. This just happens to be the one that had a nice picture that I found in here. If there is a regular background, if it's just a regular photograph, the same exact technique will work. All you really need is to have good separation between your foreground subject and your background. As long as you can see that edge fairly well, this will work out just fine. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll zoom in on our edge in here. A bit too far. Let me hold the Alt key down, back out just a little bit. That's good. Switch over here to the Refine Radius tool, kind of a paintbrush tool. And you can see there's the size of that brush, and that's right down here, bottom left-hand corner. I like making my brush just a little bit bigger than that overlap area. This is a bit too large. Let's try 20. That looks better. And then just come in and paint right along that edge. I'll normally start out and then come in a little bit and do this in just little brush strokes. There we go. And Photoshop Elements will go back in and take a look at that area that you've just brushed over and try to do a much tighter selection right along there based upon the differences that it sees. And that's why we went in and made this a lot more contrast to make that edge as obvious as possible for Photoshop Elements. Now once this is done and we have our selection made, We'll then go back and use that selection on the original layer and it will come out looking really nice. Okay, then just take your time and work around the whole figure just like this. Again, I like doing this in just little strokes and letting Photoshop Elements go back in and make that adjustment. Okay, now I'll be doing this whole thing off camera and then I'll bring the video right back up again once I have finished this step right here. Okay, that step is finished. Now at this point, we have a few choices. We can output this to a selection, or we can do a layer mask, a new layer, new layer with layer mask, new document, new document with layer mask. A lot of options in here. And depending upon how you want to do this, that really depends upon how you're going to be using the picture and how much effort you want to put into it. We're just doing this a real fast, easy way, which is just going out to a selection. So choose OK. And you can see there's our nice, tight selection. Now, 
Let's hide that background layer, open up our original background layer. Here we go. And we can now simply do a copy and then paste into our other photograph. So edit, copy, right there. Let's now bring back up the other photo. I'll just dock that right there. And then edit, paste, and there we go. Now we can adjust the size if you want to. But I kind of want this kind of dramatic like that. Kind of like a YouTube thumbnail maybe. There we go. Now notice that the values are different in the background and the foreground. She's really kind of washed out looking. So we have to adjust the values in here. And for that, let's do an adjustment layer. Go up to layer, come down to adjustment layer right here. And you want levels where it says use previous layer. Check that checkbox, choose okay. If we pull the left side in, that's gonna be darkening down the picture, making the darks darker. The right side is gonna make the lights lighter. We don't want that. And the middle does the mid-tone. So I think a combination of the left slider here and the mid-tone slider will find just the right amount. And I think right around here, that looks pretty good right there. Let's now resize her picture just a little bit. Come down here to the layer with the girl on it. And you'll see up here, upper left-hand corner, little control handle right there. There's also one in the middle here. You can pull that down and you can adjust the size right here. Or if we make sure that we're looking at tool options, you can also adjust your size right here. Here's the width and here's the height. If you have constraint proportions checked, they'll then work correctly. But the easy way is just to grab that corner. And we can then come in and make just a slight adjustment and get her size just a little bit better in here for this picture. I think that's just about right, right in there. I wanted to have enough of that train showing in behind. She was a bit too large before. There we go. Hit the green check mark. And we're all set. That's how you can combine two pictures, merge two pictures by using cut and paste here in Photoshop Elements. Now, if you like this video, hit that like button. Also, take a look at my complete training course. There's a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.